watching AYV Television. Right, clashes occurred in Freetown and other cities, such as McKinney and Kamakui in the north of the country. On August 10, when a protest descended into violence um, between the security forces and demonstrators. Over 130 people were arrested and reports put the death um, toll at 27, including police officers. President Julius Madabio said the August 10 protests aimed to overthrow the government. He has set up a 15-man committee to investigate the protests. Opposition politicians have accused the president of prejudicing the investigation by accusing them of financing, executing, and orchestrating the protests. On institutional accountability and the rule of law, the European Union's election follow-up mission to Sierra Leone in October of 2021 published. The mission has been told that there is a significant decrease in trust in the essential bodies which play integral roles in the forthcoming elections. These include the judiciary, NEC, PPRC, and the police. The mission findings are that these institutions' reputations are less trusted than is needed. Recently, the CLN police arrested and detained the former anti-corruption commissioner Adi Macaulay on allegation of incitement. His arrest was widely condemned with the Institute of Governance Reform tweeting, IGR condemns the detention of Adi Macaulay and calls for his immediate release. Adi deserves bail just on his name recognition. We note the rising political tension and the August 10 riot. Appeal to all authorities to be calm and the police to protect free speech. Tonight, we shall be discussing the August 10 unrest, investigation, accountability, the rule of law, peace, and reconciliation. My name is Samuel Weiss Bangura, and this is AYV on Sunday. All right, good evening and welcome to AYV on Sunday here on AYV Television. Um, today we shall be discussing the August 10 unrest investigation, accountability, rule of law, peace and reconciliation. Here with me, I have a star-studded panel to help me unpack the conversation for the next two hours. I have um, in the studio present the Honorable Indulu um, Givau, um, Member of Parliament. Good evening and welcome, Honorable. Good evening, Samuel. Good evening, viewers. Right, I have lawyer Augustine Sori Simbe Mara, um, a good governance um, and democracy advocate. Good evening and welcome, Augustine. Thanks, thanks, um, um, Samuel. Happy All right. To be here. We look forward to receiving um, Emmanuel Safa Abdullah, Executive Director of Society for Democratic Initiatives, who doubles as the chair of the 15 man committee set up by President Bill to look into the August 10 unrest. And we're also expecting the Executive Secretary of the Independent National Commission for Peace and Cohesion, um, our Sally Samai, to be with us um, here. So, you watching? listening and following us on all our different social media platforms. As always, we do solicit your views. Share them with us on the AYV News Facebook page. Drop them there. We'll find time to go through some of them in the show. Um, but for now, let me start off um, the conversation. I'm going to start off with you, Honorable Indolo Gevao. Um, let's go back. On what, on what grounds can we predicate the August 10 unrest? Um, for me, I will say the unrest was unnecessary, uncalled for, not justified, and uh, created so much inconvenience mm -hmm. for the entire nation and caused loss of lives, unnecessary loss of lives. Mm. You see, before now, people have been discussing the right to assemble, the right to protest, and the like. But the August 10 riot demonstration, attempted coup, call it whatever name you want to call it, was carefully planned and executed. I mean, this was one such event where people had told us the demonstration was going to start on a Monday. On a Monday, they told people, don't open your shops. On Tuesday, sit down at home. On Wednesday, we are going to make the state ungovernable. 
So the fact that they planned and, and executed it over a period of three days, and just as they promised, so did they implement it, tell us that um, it was well planned, well sponsored, with the object of them succeeding in whatever they had wanted what to do. What them? Well, the, the planners, those who funded it, those who sponsored it. Do we know them? As I speak, some, are, some, are, some have been arrested, like you are um, into stated. Mm. The police made arrest. Nobody actually came to meet the Inspector General of Police to say, we wanted to demonstrate, we wanted to protest. Mm. So the, pro the protest was faceless. Up to today, nobody had owned up that I'm the leader of the protest. I'm the leader of what happened in August 10. Mm. So as a result of that, there are laws that govern protest demonstrations and the like. Mm. There are m procedures, methodology to be followed. I mean, if you want to embark on the peaceful protest assembly and the like, Mm. All of those processes or procedures, as far as I'm concerned, we are not followed. And for whatever um, protest, as far as I'm concerned, somebody must own up. I remember four years ago, there was um, a threat of a protest, a, 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 a Black Friday. Mm. I mean, the Renaissance owned up to say they were going to organize a Black Friday protest or demonstration. And they were invited by the Inspector General of Police then for them to sit down and talk. We followed that one religiously, and we saw them go to the Inspector General of Police. They laid down their concern, and at the end of it all, they wore their, their, their black T-shirt. Well, they did not actually go in the street, but we saw them visibly in their, in their dress code, and uh, the day was observed quietly by them. What, 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 does and demo like. what does democracy dictate in terms of protest, demonstration? Every, every Sierra Leonean or every citizen has the right to demonstrate within the ambit of the law. Mm. So long as you do it within the ambit of the law, I mean, like in Sierra Leone, so long as you go, you inform the Inspector General of Police. And the reason why I think the law says you have to inform the Inspector General of Police, one, is for your own um, protection as a citizen. Mm -hmm. Because if you say you're going to demonstrate because PEPA is one leon, I might be going to demonstrate against you to say, PEPA, you don't have the reason to on the grounds that PEPA is one leon. Mm -hmm. So if there is a counter um, 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 demonstration and we clash, mm -hmm. both parties will not be safe. So the police. The mandate of the police is to protect lives and properties. Mm. That is all the reason why the drafters of the law said, if you want to protest, come and seek the, um, come and inform the Inspector General of Police, just so that he will be able to guide you, protect you, and also protect other citizens who will be busy going about their own business. So democracy dictates that if you want to protest, you want to demonstrate, it's a point that you want to make, you actually have to inform the Inspector General of Police just so that he's able to protect you and also protect other uh, well-meaning citizens in the country. All right. Um, Lawyer Mara, let, 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 let me um, hear your submission on, on, on what, what, what would be the foundation um, mm -hmm. that we would lay the August 10 on rest. I mean, Samuel, uh, to be honest, I, um, two fundamental things for me. Firstly, I, when Mr. Gival mentioned that the um, unrest took place on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it just occurred to me that I worked on all three days. I was in my office. Mm -hmm. So quite clearly, I was not following anybody's instructions. I went, in fact, on the Wednesday, mm -hmm. I was before a certain judge. We had to run f um, um, from the court's um, um, premises to my chambers. Mm -hmm. Um, I was also part of Renaissance movement. Right. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. um, four of us, including Mr. Abdullahi, who is here to come to the studio, we went to the IG on that particular day mm -hmm. after we were very poised. Uh, and that brings me to several comments and sentiments that people have shared. Oh, you are, you are, you are undermining this mm -hmm. government, etc., etc. I mean, little did they know that, in fact, 
you know, I have started activism a long time ago. Mm -hmm. In fact, we organized that um, renaissance um, protest. Mm -hmm. We wrote to the Inspector General of Police, and I agree with you that, um, you know, um, we did write to the IG. Mm -hmm. The IG invited us. It was very conducive. We had a very constructive engagement with the IG to say we are ready to come out on a certain Monday because we are very, very disappointed in, in, in the way the, I mean, the, the way and manner in, in which the economy was being handled mm -hmm. by them. You know, quite clearly we will refuse the permit. So we did two things. We said, since we are not given permits, and I'm a very democratic person, I'm a mm -hmm. very law abiding, very peaceful person. Um, I said to my other friends that um, since we're denied the permits, mm -hmm. our recourse as lawyers would be to the court. Let us go to the court. Mm -hmm. But notwithstanding that um, determination, let us also ensure that we call on our supporters and well-wishers that they don't black attire on a certain Monday. Mm -hmm. So we did that. Um, as lawyers, we would not encourage folks to come out on the right. state especially after we were expressly denied permits, mm -hmm. right? I, I mean, I agree with some schools of thought, and I will share this in a minute, mm -hmm. um, in terms of whether you can really restrict um, rights to protest guaranteed under the Constitution by right. a subordinate legislation, right? But I'm very circumspect for two reasons. One, yeah. I am aware that a um, 50 man committee has been set up. Mm -hmm. So I would not necessarily want to um, make extensive comments mm -hmm. in terms of what the limitations are, what the contours of this particular mm -hmm. right um, are. And also, I'm aware that the police um, is investigating a number of persons for the Augustine protest. But suffice to say, um, Samuel, mm -hmm. that um, we cannot dis dissociate mm -hmm. the Augustine um, riot and protest, mm -hmm. and in some degree, I am not supporting any um, loss of life on the part of civilians and um, police officers. And I agree that we can channel our grievances, mm -hmm. you know, in many ways other than protest. For me, protest would be the last result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are many other ways. I we could tweet all day against government. We could drag government to, to the court of law. Mm -hmm. We could take them to international fora. Etc. Etc. Protest should be the last resort mm. because we live in a very volatile society where um, a small demonstration could could um, could go um, 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 out of the way. I, I would, just but, quickly, how would that pan out for the ordinary civil unions who are not exposed to perhaps, um, I mean, the opportunities Augustine, um, Indulu are exposed to. Quite so clearly. for them, they just have. I mean, their voice to use. They just feel like, okay, let them see us. How I, I was going to make out? that point, and I think it's a very fundamental point because mm -hmm. we have to examine the civic space. We have to examine uh, the platforms that are available to ordinary citizens to mm -hmm. air out their spleens. Mm -hmm. We have to ensure, and I said this to somebody that mm -hmm. I've never listened to at the bio, you mm -hmm. know, I've never in my life. But I said to someone, that if, it, if you expand the space for participatory governance, mm -hmm. you have many folks who would come and hold government to account mm -hmm. for their actions, uh, whether omissions, et cetera, et cetera. Once that space is widening, you would give very little room to the other buyers of this world mm. to, to, um, um, to have so much sway over ordinary citizens. Mm -hmm. Because then you would have a, you have a lots and lots of people who would be adding and commenting on the governance structures. Mm. But I see, and, and you noted that, the, um, I mean, by the EU reports, by um, several other international reports, we see that there's been a considerable shrink in that space mm -hmm. where citizens occupy between um, um, the government and you know the rest of the government. So once that space is shrunk, it means therefore that other folks, other elements could easily exploit mm. the shrinking or the decrease of trust in these institutions and whip disaffection mm. in citizens. And that's exactly 
um, I would say mm -hmm. that you cannot dissociate August 10 from those sentiments mm. to say that we have a responsibility to widen that space. Because if you give that space to Augustine Mara, he would take the IG to the courts. Mm. He would not call out citizens to say, you know, um, employ weapons, employ um, um, implements, and come out. Can I quickly then, take you out of yes. curiosity? Let me take you back quickly, just for a minute. You mentioned um, when you were in the Nations, for yes. example, and um, you organized the Black Monday. Yes. And you engaged the Inspector General of Police. Unfortunately, I mean, expressly, you were denied. Correct. But um, there were thoughts at play. One of those was taking the police to court. And did we that did, happen? We, yes, so we, what yes. came out of that? Oh, yes. And that's very significant. Mm -hmm. Significant for two reasons. Which are? Because in those papers, mm -hmm. when we filed the action in Supreme Court against the IG, to say essentially, yeah. um, you know, I, I know because mm -hmm. I you know, worked with the other um, folks on the papers, mm -hmm. to say you cannot restrict constitutional rights because as a human rights expert, yeah. the rights to freedom of expression and assembly in its broadest characterization would include the right mm -hmm. to protest mm -hmm. and demonstration, right? I, it would not include the right to insurrection. Mm -hmm. It would not include right. the right to civil unrest. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't include that. Right. It, it, it is limited to the right to peacefully protest and mm -hmm. peacefully demonstrate. Mm -hmm. So our position in those papers um, was the fact that, and it still remains a position, mm -hmm. that you cannot restrict a constitutional right by subordinate legislation. Because the public order act that requires you to obtain a permit, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's far below the constitution. The constitution right. gives you a right to um, expression and assembly. You cannot use a subordinate legislation to restrict that right. And that's a position. So, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I agree yeah. with some schools of thought mm -hmm. who think that um, for that right in the constitution to be exercised, and to be enjoyed, mm -hmm. you do not necessarily require that authorization in the Public Order Act. Mm. If you want to go strictly by the Public Order Act, you require that authorization. If you want to enjoy that right as in the Constitution, it is not circumscribed by Section 17 in the Public Order Act. So, 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 and, uh, so in we, in can, essence, we uh, can disagree only. In essence, a, a mother gives and the child takes. It's, it's what we call in human rights a clawback, <laughs> a clawback. Right. right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, but like, like I said, yeah. we, we, and, and I've had several very prominent lawyers, mm -hmm. for example, Charles Magai, yeah. espouses that same view, that in so far as the exercise and enjoyment of constitutional rights is concerned, it needs not be circumscribed by Section 17 of the Public Order. So the Public Order but as not be counted legal as scholars, we disagree only in terms of inter <laughs> That's why we went to the Supreme Court. Because once there's an interpretation by the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. it becomes the law of the land. And right. I'm saddened that over since 2017 to date, it was filed under the APC regime. Right. Under the APC regime. We filed those papers. If the Supreme Court had taken a position, a clear position on that issue, we could not have a back and forth and prevarication on what, um, 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 whether section 17 mm -hmm. um, um, necessarily restricts the constitutional rights. All right. It is the duty of the Supreme Court to give us a clear position. I, I know you want to jump in, but let me quickly welcome um, the lady in the studio, Awasamai. Um, good evening and welcome to Iwajian Sunday. And thanks for coming. You look all good this evening. Thank you for taking your time. Yes, uh, I'll give out. Yes. Um the discussion is really very interesting. Mm -hmm. You see, when we're discussing the August 10th um, issue from your intro, um, specific things come to mind. Which are? One, is it necessary for you to seek the permission of the IG? Mm -hmm. Now, you heard my brother here say, a well-educated human rights activist, that when they were ready to demonstrate, they wrote to the Inspector General of Police, mm -hmm. And uh, we are deprived of the permit. They took another step by instituting an action against the police. Up to now, I am sure that action would not have been heard. Mm -hmm. You know, that action was instituted during the APC regime. Mm -hmm. It had not been heard. There are times I come to this studio, I don't praise institution because I want to throw praise or, or shower praises on them for any reason, but. I always say, for now, he was talking about space. We have to say 
thanks to God a little bit that that space that he's talking about to have been strained is being opened somehow. The civic space. Yes. Um, I hardly follow up uh, papers that are filed by colleagues. Mm -hmm. But when he filed his paper for preventing him to move around on election day, mm -hmm. and the Supreme Court heard and, and, and handed down judgment on that issue, honestly, I gave the Supreme Court thumbs up because it's one of the brilliant judgments that the Supreme Court had handed down on human rights issue, mm -hmm. and he won the case. So the fact that he filed that paper under this administration, the Supreme Court, I mean, headed by this current Chief Justice and um, a panel of Supreme Court judges, looked into that matter and handed down judge judgment, it's something that we have to commend an institution that the European Union is saying the trust in them is shrinking. Because these are some of the things that you expect institutions to be looking into and laying down um, jurisprudence as far as the law is when, concerned. When the, when the EU made that submission, it is under this very leadership at the judiciary. Yes, and well, that's what I'm saying. It's this same judiciary that had had a human rights issue. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, first in history, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. for somebody to take a government institution to court, take the Sierra Leone police to court, take NEC to court, whosoever restricted him on that day. And that was not the first time that they restricted him. I follow him religiously. Mm -hmm. There was once a time when they restricted him for coming out on cleaning Saturday. He instituted an action. I'm not sure that action had been had. Mm -hmm. And that was in the past administration. On this occasion in 2018, um, he instituted this action. There was a change of regime. That action had been had. It's a human rights issue. That judgment is done. I can use it tomorrow. It's precedent. It's law in this country. So if the U European Union is condemning, let's say, or criticizing the judiciary, a judiciary that hears a human rights issue that um, was filed before it first in history and hand, them, and hand down judgment and uh, give same, that judgment in favor of a citizen against a government institution, that institution must be praised. Should we be ce should we be celebrating that? I mean, look at looking at other nations. Take South Africa. Take Kenya. I mean, their judiciary. Their, uh, it, it appears that they are from another planet. Because what, what, what we see every now and then, even when um, they would have held na um, national um, general elections. The, the judiciary still has the power to say, hey, wait. And the judiciary appears to be very credible. And they may, So should we actually be celebrating this judgment when we have so many other cases in front of the judiciary okay. <laughs> that, that, that would still look, I mean, put us in this position to say, wait, what is context, happening with this judiciary? In the context of what we are discussing, right. I mean, context of what we are discussing, human rights issues, mm -hmm. issues being brought to court when one institution deprives you of, of your right and the, there's recourse to another, for them to have actually, um, hand, um, for them to have come out with a judgment, I, I think we have to celebrate okay. them. Yeah, uh, I mean, sorry. not saying mm -hmm. they, we, we, we should give them uh, a distinction mm -hmm. in their of, uh, in their activities, but times here are at least it's first a pass. in history. First in history, mm -hmm. I, I I am right. 19 years standing at the bar. Mm -hmm. We've had several. It's soon, so it, many, it would soon qualify so to be many, a Supreme Court judge. So mm -hmm. many human rights issues. By slash, I remember once Omar Fofana had to say, "Until the judiciary hand down the decision, I'm not, I'm not going to cut down my hair." Yeah, and we've had people approaching the Supreme Court on human rights issues without those issues being looked into. For this judiciary to have actually done what they did, yes, I'll celebrate it. Which I'm sure you still have cases there, but let me allow you. But yes, before I bring um, so our quickly, one. I think it's commendable. Um, you know, I, for the simple fact, I wasn't expecting the judgment. In fact. I was out of the country, um, so I did an interview very early in the morning right. um, on AYV. Uh, so I think it's commendable. But um, that appears to be an exception rather than the norm. Mm. Uh, the norm is that there are critical constitutional matters that are still in the Supreme Court which have not been heard. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the Supreme Court, he knows, he's a very senior legal practitioner, he knows as the Supreme Court that shapes essentially Mm -hmm. the constitutional destiny of a nation, right? Mm. And if you have um, several judgments of similar nature, in my case, right. being handed by the Supreme Court, 
it boosts confidence in the citizenry, and people would rather come to court mm. than channel their dis disaffection in the manner in which they did on August 10, mm. right? And that's the responsibility of not only the judiciary, but also of other institutions, yes. such as the police. We'll come to look at the accountability aspect of these institutions and what, um, I mean, their rules are. Let me just quickly um, bring in um, our, you know, um, the August 10 unrest. First off, we, we've seen recent um, rankings putting Sierra Leone at fourth in the, in, in the region. Instead of third, we slipped a, a space as the most peaceful country. And um, I mean, regionally. And um, the, fragility, the fragility report is not, all, it's not also good for Sierra Leone, being among one of the three most fragile states in the region. And with the August 10 unrest, first off, where did that put um, your work, being in charge of the permanent infrastructure to look after our peace and national cohesion? Thank you very much. Um, firstly, when I saw the panelists, <laughs> I was like, oh, this looks so legal. <laughs> now you're coming into my team. Thank you very much. Um, definitely, if we look at our, this institution, the Independent Commission for Peace and National Cohesion, it's still in the infant stage. Maybe it's a year old now. Um, but Thank God we've been able to look at what has been happening around us mm -hmm. based on all these um, global reports on Sierra Leone. And since inception, mm -hmm. we've always been saying that Sierra Leone is a fragile state and people should pay more attention to all these fragility reports and what's happening um, in country. Mm -hmm. We should not just be resting on our or saying that Sierra Leone is a peaceful country, mm -hmm. we're peaceful people, but these flags that have been raised constantly should be looked at, looked into, investigated, and we should, as a nation, mm -hmm. not just the commission, but as a nation, sit down and work together so that we enjoy what we've been enjoying for 20 years now. Remember, mm -hmm. we, we, peace don't come. Right. Um, mm -hmm. 20 years. This War year is, done. yes. It's 20 years now. And for us to enjoy the sustainability of that 20 years should not be resting on ours as just we're peaceful. Mm. But we should be looking at critical things like what our brothers have been discussing. Um, thanks, we hear in success stories from the judiciary. We want to hear more success stories, not just from the judiciary, but from other institutions, the Human Rights Commission. Remember, when you invited me here, I said, why is the Human Rights Commission right. not here? Mm -hmm. uh, we, they should be part of this panel. Right. Um, we all should be looking at our different roles and responsibility and how we could work together. Civic education, um, now it's election time, the NEC, the PPRC, how we could be working together in harmony, not as isolated institutions. Mm -hmm but also looking at how we could all address uh, peace and national cohesion, the fragility status of um, the nation in our different roles and responsibility, but collectively as well as a team, and how we could work with our traditional leaders. Because these people are all key in terms of promoting peace and national cohesion, and in terms of working to de-escalate tensions. Um, that have been rising. Because one of the critical things about all that have been going on is um, how these have pushed um, tensions, mm. unnecessary tensions, not just in the, the social media, but even in the civic space and even in the villages and town. And again, we'll say civic education needs to come on board because people need to understand their roles, their rights, and their responsibility as citizens of this nation. Mm. And once that's lacking, it means that our role, even as the Peace Commission, mm -hmm. would be very difficult. <laughs> People would ask themselves, why do I need to even be part of this peace process? Is it critical? Because they do not even understand their role, as their civic role as citizens of this nation. And they do not even understand how they need to um, um, promote peace as their rights and their responsibilities as citizens of this nation. You know, let me ask this question. Um, unfortunately, 
our society, in fact, well, our 1991 constitution does not give us the right as citizens to even, I mean, take any legal action against our state, against the state for, for, for our socioeconomic rights. It says, no, these are non-justiciable, so do not make that attempt. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a situation where you have ordinary civil unions, like I think two or three days ago, like citizens took to the street in Tunisia, feel like um, their government has not been able to, to meet their socioeconomic demands, things are getting out of hand, so they took to the street, that created some pandemonium for them. Of in Sierra Leone, we were seeing the politicians are giving different characterization to the August 10 unrest. Yeah. But for, for many who followed, they're saying it's, the, the unrest could not be unconnected to the socioeconomic situation of Sierra Leone. So if I listen to the news, I feel like Augustin Mara, who is very vocal, who belongs to the fortunate few in society that can make that move. I mean, when he makes that move, the space is narrowed, he's, he's gagged, he's clamped down. How much more about ordinary Samuel down there? What do I have? Maybe when I feel disgruntled, I have to go to the streets. So the question is, the political class, are they making things easy for us to maintain our peace in the sense that whether it's the provision of socioeconomic activities or it's them using us as human shield to escape accountability. How does it work for you? How does the structure look like? Okay, if I were to go back to um, the just celebrated International Peace Day mm -hmm. and if you listened mm -hmm to our politicians and the statement on that day, mm -hmm. you would, um, I think everybody in that hall was in awe at what the politicians said. Um, if I could reiterate some of the things that they mentioned mm -hmm. is that they've been greedy, they've been selfish, they've been self-centered, and everything they've been doing is for themselves, mm -hmm. right? And we, the citizens of Sierra Leone, should not allow ourselves to be used um, to that extent where um, they are the only beneficiaries of um, the success stories. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what's been going on in Sierra Leone. And I believe that it's still linked with the August 10. Mm -hmm. How selfish have they been? Mm -hmm. And we, I would not want to dive into some of the research that we've done because mm -hmm. we're doing a research currently with the um, the peace commission so we understand why certain parts of the country they were the ones actually mm -hmm. um that came out on the streets and the rest of the country did not come out why this mm -hmm. we want to understand because if we are to call this at the nick of the border we need to understand the dynamics right why this is happening and how we would address this in future and again the commission is there as a voice, we want to hear from people. If people are having issues, um, this is the place. We have a mandate in our, in our act where we could advise the government on issues, critical issues. So if people are coming with their complaints and we see re repetition of what's going on, we have a mandate to put it pen to paper, research on the issue to make sure they have valid points and valid information, and we could forward it, mm. right? If the government is not acting, that's another thing. But if the commission is doing our role and our responsibility as mandated mm -hmm. and advising the government, we need to follow up as well. Mm. One of the things I keep telling um, donors is that we will not be doing unnecessary press releases. But we'll be doing a lot of one-to-one -one engagement, we'll be doing the advisory notes, and we'll be doing a lot of follow-up mm. to make sure things are working. And we also have a very open-door policy. And even with the, at the, the, con, the, the, um, in the International Peace Day, different politicians vouch on the stage that they've been calling us, mm -hmm. and we've been responding to their call. So we're very open to all political parties and to every sect, mm. not just, um, the high and mighty, but also even those, the, the market women association, mm -hmm. the bike riders, we've been there for everybody. That's our role, that's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. And we will continue to be their voice. That's why whenever it's necessary, we'll meet them on a one-to-one -on -one basis. The office is always open. 
Again, it's an institution. Mm -hmm. People are not used to it. So mm -hmm. we've been going around the country sensitizing people, educating them about our role and responsibility, setting up coalition, peace coalition at district level so that we'll not be working in isolation, but we'll be working with the partners on the ground mm -hmm. and the different institutions that are already set up, like the Parman Chiefs and all the other different institutions mm -hmm. on the ground so that we'll not be at distance from the people. And one of the things that we're also pushing is community ownership so that people would look at issues themselves and bring out the issues themselves, will not go there to ascertain this is what's going on and how we could resolve it. They need to also advise us as what they think is best to resolve issues on the ground. Mm -hmm. So we'll be working very closely with everybody and at every time. And thanks again to AYV for the peace platform mm -hmm. because we're also bringing a lot of people there to voice out their opinion, mm -hmm. their public opinion, and we will ensure that people speak out because if you if people refuse to speak out mm -hmm. suppression will cause an uprise so and, that's some of the and, things and that as you we'll say, be working as with. you say that our i'm going to i'm going to um, bring mara on um, on that you know peace starts with when you have the opportunity to actually express yourself you have to say what is going on with you when you don't have that that space to voice out your your anger it becomes something else and at the end of the day it explodes and when it explodes it's not good for a nation i mean this goes um to the recent crisis we had um honorable Geval mentioned that um the civic space has been widening a bit i mean compared to where we were according to honorable Geval. and you know when we talk about freedom of speech and all of that very i think in one of these very show the AYV on sunday the previous edition i had um adi macaulay and others and he voiced out i mean he, he interpreted in his own opinion what the law i mean is saying about protest and demonstration and um we we also where that landed in so in terms of freedom of speech freedom of expression how would you paint that currently in Sierra Leone? I, I think I, I would have to um, firstly join, associate myself with what um, Awa said. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, she's been very correct and um, she's been very clear mm -hmm. about some of the underlying causes mm -hmm. of you know, uh, uh, social crisis that we face. And I think that, um, I mean, it's a good thing that we, we have a peace uh, national cohesion commission. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good thing that we set up this infrastructure. But, I mean, leadership has to be deliberate. They have, they, they have to be honest. And they have to be very decisive about peace and national cohesion. Mm -hmm. Peace does not suddenly spring up from anywhere. It's, it's the result of consistent action and purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think as, as a nation, as a government, uh, you do not only set up by, by an act of parliament, um, a commission you know, such as the Peace mm -hmm. and National Cohesion Commission, but you, en you ensure that by your action, you do not undermine the mandates of that commission. Mm -hmm. Because then you make their work very difficult to keep the peace and to ensure that that gap between government and the government is, 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 is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, Trust is very shutting. keen what they do, right? And I say this because um, very recently, I was one of several lawyers who, um, who um, made representation for Adi Macaulay. Somebody called me, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, what's your business there, you? A civil rights activist. I mean, uh, you could remember the past regime, the number of things that they perpetrated. You know, I said to him that my activism is not for or against a political party. Mm. But once I realized that a right is being violated, my duty is to ensure that I speak out and I speak and I speak up. I remember Samuel. Uh, you know, remember uh, um, during the the protests on mm -hmm. the Wednesday. Yeah when the vice president made the uh, pronouncement con concerning the curfew, I tweeted that 
if that pronouncement did not reference the Constitution, it's unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. I had um, hyperbolically over a million calls and text messages. Oh, you are creating chaos for this country. Mm -hmm. People are trying to, you know, um, um, address a national security concern. You are talking about constitution. What constitution? I mean, that's the attitude of our politicians. Mm. When it serves them right, they love the constitution. When they want to perpetrate evil, they said, no, don't bring constitution, we'll suspend it. You know, I am very um, happy that good sense prevailed at mm. some point, that that curfew did not last for a very long time. But that's the sort of um, point that you made concerning that space and giving citizens. Imagine, I'm a lawyer, mm. you know, I'm an expert in human rights, constitutional expert. I tweeted, based on the law, that if you do not base your curfew on mm -hmm. the constitution that lays down clear procedures for that, right. that pronouncement is unconstitutional. You know, I'm not a layman. My opinion was based on the law. Mm -hmm. I had several text messages. Oh, you are joining, joining those people who are undermining the state. Mm -hmm. Undermine how? I mean, reminding the government of their, I mean, leadership of the oaths that they took to ensure that they would uphold the constitution. Mm -hmm. They did not say they would uphold the constitution and they would ensure that national security, whether it's a response or act or whatever, would be consistent with the constitution. It would not violate the constitution, right? So when um, um, Adi Macaulay was um, summoned at this um, CID for a certain opinion, um, and I said that you could bring 10 lawyers, you could have various legal opinion on that provision. Mm -hmm. That is what we do. We are paid for our opinion. And I had three lawyers on that day. Yes, <laughs> on that we, we were paid for. <laughs> so the, the, the sense mm -hmm. and the feeling right. and the apprehension mm -hmm. that you know, um, inevitably gives is that if a man of that stature with a lawyer qualified, licensed to give an opinion on the law, was former attorney general, um, anti-corruption commissioner, mm -hmm. if he's summoned to the CID for an opinion on the law, imagine what would happen to the many downtrodden folks who would want to voice out their disaffection or discontentment against um, perhaps socioeconomic conditions. Mm -hmm. And that is why I say that, and I'm not saying this because uh, you know, I um, um, influence any reports you know, that is um, being published concerning our civic space mm -hmm. and the fragility of our peace. Right. But the fact of the matter is, and I, I don't like comparisons, right? I think that we must um, hold this regime accountable based on their policies, based on their actions, and we must really restrain ourselves from looking back because there's been a lot of um, reflections and mm. reminiscences, mm. right? I think that we must look at this regime and assess them based on their acts and policies, mm. right? Um, there's been consistent um, reports, there's been um, studies conducted which are very clear and they're unanimous in terms of that decreasing space for citizens. And I made that point, mm. you know, that if you have a functional civic space, where people can articulate, where not only there are the Macaulays who are highly placed in society, but the Souris, the Brimers, etc., etc., et cetera, could, could um, hear out their concerns without fear that, oh, they will be summoned to the CID, um, you know, to how, give statements, How, et cetera, how, et cetera. how can we broaden that space? Uh, in, on the, the, um, International Democracy Day, I read a report on the Facebook page of the U.S. Embassy Freetown. And what the report said is that in a democracy, or true democracy, is where citizens are free to say their mind without fear of being intimidated, without fear of them being locked up in a, in a state. So how do we then broaden that space for, I mean, for civic accountability? Uh, I would say two things. Um, Firstly, um, we, and it, this brings to mind what um, is very popular around what Pakaba said many mm -hmm. years ago mm -hmm. concerning when 
we had this surge of mu musicians right. singing against um, the SFPP regime mm. then. And he said, it is, it is typical Pakaba style, that the ones they're not going to push, they're allowed to let them sing. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, and you cannot, once you have, once you have a democracy, mm -hmm. you should ensure that there is um, an adequate platform for citizens to engage government, mm -hmm. right? And you should refrain from branding those people who speak up and all governments accountable as opposition operatives. And that's a consistent label. It's not, that's a consistent label. And I'm not saying that this has started suddenly under the SLPPO. You know, I was called many times mm -hmm. as an SLPP, the word was SLPP, so we'll get. <laughs> you know, I was someone before, um, 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 you know, one or two government ministers who say, right. oh, you don't work for SLPP, and SLPP, they use you. No, now they say, I mean, I APC operates. So it's, um, and Umo Fofana, mm -hmm makes this point almost on a weekly mm. basis about branding. Mm -hmm. yeah, at, some, at some point, if your whole government is accountable, you are, not, you are an opposition operative. So once you, and that would frighten citizens, because most people who have genuine concerns to raise against government are afraid to come out lest they be branded as opposition operatives. Right. And I have, I have made that point that, um, you know, in a democracy, opposition groups exist to ensure that they check the excesses of government. And mm. it's, not, um, it's not illegal, it's not unlawful for mm. someone to belong to any political party. I don't, I have never been to any political party in my life, well, right? I, but I, the point I'm, I'm making, tempted. Sarah, I'm tempted, just quickly, I'm, I'm tempted, before I, I, I bring in Honorable Giver, I'm tempted to, to know where do we draw the line between criticizing okay. and fanning the flames, especially when um, the opposition, I mean, the way the opposition politicians are going about criticizing certain things. Where do we draw that line no, between Samuel, constructive I, I, I criticism tell you, I, and fanning I, the flames? I, I tell you that um, I think you must have known, I mean, as a journalist, right. when you invite mm -hmm. folks to come to your program, mm -hmm. many people will tell you, mm, I'm concerned. Right. When you share the flyers, I had many messages from folks. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, go there, they don't begin to <laughs> arrest people and right. put them comment. Right. You know, go there. Mm -hmm. So even an hour before, are you sure you are going to? I said, for what? We live mm -hmm. in a democracy. Mm -hmm. I will live in a democracy. Right. You know, so I told journalists when we had the press conference for Adi McCauley, mm -hmm. I told journalists, I said that you two should be afraid. Because nowadays, you would not have folks come to your program mm. if afterwards, after this program, I'm invited to the CID to make a statement concerning a certain position mm -hmm. I held mm -hmm. on the program. Right. I said there will come a time when you would call folks to um, um, participate in your programs, you would not find any, right. anyone except for government mm -hmm. um, um, folks. I mean, you know, I said you would not find critical voices. So it also behoves you mm -hmm. to ensure that this space is not um, 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 consistently shrunk. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I, I love your right. point about making sure that we have a distinction between genuine concerns, mm -hmm. um, critical voices, and not fanning the flames. Right. right. That's why I said to you, mm -hmm. I've never listened to Adebayo's yeah. um, um, audio, never. You know, because I think that in a democracy, whereas you have a right to freedom of expression, um, that does not include whipping um, 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 flames mm. and, and making sure that you cause um, um, unrest in, right. in, in a society. Let but the critical point, mm -hmm. Samuel, before I Quickly, close, yes, please. is that um, once, you, once you create that space, you would have many voices, and the creation of that space should be deliberate. Mm. How do you ensure that, for example, in the Peace Commission, in whatever government programs you're organizing, you bring not only um, regime folks, but people who are critical of government to participate in those programs, to ensure that they are involved. Once they are involved, once they are, uh, their, their voices and their concerns are heard, right, they would feel that they have participated in the governance. Mm. But once there's exclusion, once there's um, 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 a, a deliberate attempt to exclude you know, those who are critical, those who are in part of opposition groups, and policies and programs are only tailored towards those who are sympathetic of the regime or regime supporters, 
those other folks would feel excluded. Mm. And in that case, you are shrinking that space for them to participate in governance. All right. Uh, um, Honorable Gevao, the, 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 the submission you made of um, the civic space being widened, I mean, compared to what it used to be then, on, on, um, what are the indicators? What, 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 what's, uh, what are you looking at? What are the parameters? Thank you, Sam. Um, <coughs> You see, as a nation, if we want to examine ourselves, whether we are improving or we are retrogressing, we cannot avoid going back to history. Mm. And the way governance is today, even though I am a politician, makes me very, very scared, not for myself, but for my children. Mm. Right. You see, if we go down memory lane, you'll agree with me that when President Ahmed Tijan Kabal came into governance, within his 10 years of governance, we had at least five to seven coup attempts or coups mm. in Sierra Leone. Five to seven. One succeeded, some were aborted, mm. one in Wellington and the like. He governed and uh, handed over to um, ex-president Ernest by Krohman. History tells us that within his 10 to 11 years of governance, there was no attempted coup, not one. The only alarm was an issue of mutiny that the alleged took place in Makeni. Not a single attempted coup. Mm. Now, we have in another republic, you know, his Excellency, retired Brigadier Julius Madagio, is governor. And uh, we've heard, um, a, 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 I mean, a treason trial, OK? Mm -hmm. We've had a treason trial. We've had this insurrection. People are keen to cool and the like. As a Sierra Leonean, I will say we have to believe in the ballot box. Mm. Honestly speaking, I mean, we say we are a democratic state, we are a republic. We elect our representative every five years. Five years is like five days, if you really want to mm. philosophize about it. Just yesterday, we went to the polls. Tomorrow, we'll be going to the polls again. It's just like yesterday. Mm. I mean, why not actually wait for the polls to see whether you can use your, 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 your might, which is your ballot? to either re-elect or remove this person who is so ruling you very well or who is not ruling you the way that you want. How, how, so, how would you help? How would you help, for example, the, co the 15 man committee being set up to investigate that? If, for example, you, you are also saying the, the, the August 10 unrest was an attempted coup. Well, the magnitude of destruction and loss of life, the mm. way this, the, the security apparatus mm. explain how dangerous that event was, mm. one can only akin it to that. Mm. Honestly speaking, for since, since the war <laughs> ended, this is one of the first times that we saw Sierra Leonean kill their brother. Even when their brother is dead, they continue killing him. That anger, that venom that we saw, Assuming they had actually got to the seat of power, what would you have expected? So when you discuss in this, you also say, just if they had actually hit state house, mm. just if they had taken over SLBC, AYV, what statement would have come out of their mouth? But like talking about democratic space, I will always say this government has, or is doing extremely well in trying to broaden the democratic space. Mm. The repeal of the public, um, part five of the public order act. You know, before now, I still remember a young girl in 2017 who was taken to court because she merely expressed her opinion about the Minister of Information then, a lady called Thomas Abuto, Thomas Bomaya. Teresa. Teresa, Teresa Bomaya. That lady was taken to court, was sent to, was sent to uh, Panemba Road for about five adjourned dates before she was admitted to bail. I mean, we saw several journalists taken to CID merely for writing a, a, an article criticizing the government for, let's say, graft or, some, or, or, or something of the sort. Now, this government, ha, I mean, 
has decided to take the bull by its horn. President Ahmed Tijan Kaba promised to repeal Part 5. President Ahmed Anes by Kroma, it was part of his manifesto. He promised to repeal Part 5, but both of them did not. President um, Gilos Madabio in his campaign right here at AYV during the debate said, if I win, I am going to repeal uh, the Public Order Act. When we talk about mm -hmm. democracy, we should not just be using manifestos as a piece of paper. We use our manifestos as promises to the public, and when we come, we try to um, 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 make those promises come to fruition. He did say it, he's done it. He has repealed, the, he has, he has um, 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 abolished the death penalty. Just quickly, before you go to the death penalty, let's go back to um, the repeal of part five of the Public Order Act. Um, many of us commended the government for doing that. Um, but at the end of the day, what experts have submitted, especially with the introduction of the cyber, cyber crime. Um, um, crime law, the act itself, maybe saying, well, so come yes, on. this is more yes. draconian than, than yeah. the public Patrick. order. Sir, so I'll tell you, I have, I, this young man does not practice in the lower court as much as I practice. Mm -hmm. When I say the lower court, let's say the magistrate court. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot <laughs> compare the negative ramification. Right of the Public Order Act to that of the Cyber, to cy cyber, uh, cyber Act. Mm -hmm. I mean, yesterday, even for saying, Honorable Gibral, look where you turn, I will take you for defamatory libel. Mm -hmm. I will send you to Pandemic Road. Honestly speaking, right. I mean, there we are plethora of cases in the magistrate court, people mm -hmm. going to jail for no just cause because somebody said, um, look where you black. And mm -hmm. the person would, uh, today, even with the, with the Cyber Crime Act, Hardly do you see somebody in Pandembaru, like I am speaking, there is nobody in Pandembaru, there is nobody in the CID for violating that cyber crime bill. Because the procedure in investigating and actually getting evidence to prosecute and convict, is not easy. I have tried it once or twice, but with the, with the, with the part five of the Public Order Act, for just saying you are a thief, I know your, your defense will be justification. But before you can justify, you've been sent to Panama Road maybe for, for, for like five days. For just writing that Honorable Giver is not a honest parliamentarian, I will take you for defamatory rider. By the time I justify it, that I mean, I mean, what I said is true, that person would have sent it. People so can still be taken for that. It's just that it's now a civil matter. I stand to be correct. No, no, yes. yeah. It is a civil matter. I mean, now, because it is a civil matter, you are not so scared of being sent to jail mm. for merely writing being and a criminal. criticizing me because you think I am not handling public funds the right way. So by the repeal of that particular law, the, 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 the media space, the, the space for the public to criticize all government officials, including me seated there, mm -hmm. I mean, has been broadened. Mm. Also, even the judiciary, because we are discussing institutions, right. the way we, we, we now access the, the justice system, I mean, that also, that space has, has been broadened under this dispensation. I will tell you, before, before 2018, people in Kailan hardly saw a judge. Today, each and every district has a judge. So now, if you commit an offense in Kailan and it is committed, you are tried right down in Kailan. If you are convicted, sentenced there. If you are not convicted, released there. Before now, if you are if you are committed for for a for um, 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 an indictable offense, it will take at least seven, eight to one year before you are transferred, maybe to Kenya before you are tried and indictment comes out. Because there was only one customary law officer stationed in in Kenima who covered both Kenima. Um, Kono and Kailan. So the, the, the democratic space, the space for us to participate in governance, the way these institutions are now working, I will say that space is being brought. Let me, let me hear you, the fact that you were here together with Adi Macaulay um, that very night um, when we had that conversation. Um, what, what, what do you make of um, Adi's um, arrest and detention for giving his legal opinion on the law. That's a subject that I had not wanted to comment. <laughs> I will comment. No, choose not to if you don't want no, to. No, I will comment. Okay. The comment Adi made was not on the subject on, on the floor. The subject we were discussing was PR system. That's what we were discussing. The comment he made was on the right to assemble. Mm -hmm. 
and I commented thereafter. I admonished the public. If you look at the clip, I came telling the public that you should not hack in to us. If you go out there and demonstrate and you are arrested, we'll just go see you, say goodbye to you, and go to our comfortable homes. For me, there is nothing wrong in the police inviting me. Somebody has to do that job. When we talk about the rule of law, Mr. Mara here can be invited. If the police is of the view that if he is released, he, I mean, somebody will interfere with him, that evidence will be tampered with. They have the discretion to use it. What evidence? What evidence? When I mean, let's like, say you are being investigated somewhere, right? And the investigation is not complete. For me, when we speak about bail at police level, mm -hmm. the object of it is not to punish anyone. The object of restricting somebody's liberty ought not be to punish that person. The object of it ought be to or should be to preserve the investigation process. Has that been the practice over time? Or the practice has been... I don't hold a brief for them. Uh, uh, I don't... <coughs> I, I wouldn't say that is the practice. Mm. So what I am saying, somebody has to do a job, particularly under the atmosphere that mm. Sierra Leone finds itself. Mm. Nobody had been arrested for coming on AYB on Sunday. I will say that I had been here for well over 15 to 20 programs. Mm. I am sure what led to the invitation of Adi Macaulay and maybe detention was the, the, the period within which certain remarks or statements could have been made, taken into cognizance. Um, there was a female black, black day, I mean, following the week that we came here, and after we left here, there was a demonstration. I am not trying to put the jigsaw together for anybody. But I am not, I, what all I'm trying to say is to allay the fear of the public that don't say I will not go to AYV because if I go to AYV and I make a comment, I am going to be invited or I am going to be arrested. Mm -hmm. What is happening in Sierra Leone, I am sure, is to seek all of our interests, including my brother, Adi Macaulay. Okay? So I, will not, I will not support the police to um, um, detain him. I will not support the police to detain me but somebody has to do that job. But was it right at the, at the, at the time? I mean, what, what, was there a strong, I mean, grounds for the detention? Honestly, Samuel, it's not for me to say. All right. Let me quickly Yes, uh, Samuel, a couple of things. I, I think um, um, Mr. Givau has, has um, said. Firstly, let's get back to the Special Investigations Committee. Yeah. You know, I, I think I tweeted. I was just trying to pull up the tweet. Mm -hmm in which I express my, my joy mm -hmm. at the selection of Safa Abdullah. And I've, I've always said this, that um, you know, I wanted to be a completely corporate lawyer. It was Safa who first um, approached me in terms of human rights mm -hmm. in, in college back then. And he encouraged me to pursue human rights. You know, so I would always say he's my human rights mentor. Mm. So I you know, tweeted, he and I have spoken a lot, you know, a lot on this, you know, in terms of my commitment to the process, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but two fundamental things. Firstly, I did mention in that tweet that uh, you cannot set up an investigations committee to say investigate the incident and you characterize that ins incident as insurrection, right? I am not saying it was not, I am not saying it was. Mm. I am saying give the investigation the free arm to come to us to say to the there is abundance of evidence that in fact it was carefully orchestrated, it was an insurrection, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I have enormous respect for Safa. You know, I know once the evidence abounds, it will come to us to say, look, gentlemen, look, ladies, there was enough evidence to characterize those incidents as insurrection. That's the first point. I think the other point, um, um, you know, that, that has been made is the composition of the committee. Uh, committee. It's so heavily laden with government um, um, appointees, mm -hmm. right? And that does not sort of give the assurance 
um, of, of bias. But, you know, like I said, and, um, you know, I know a number of um, folks, I think I was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, oh, yes, yeah, so, yes, from the board. <laughs> from the board. No, I know a number of folks there. You know, I know I know that Monk, for example, yeah. is one of them. Yeah. Um, I have respect for most of those folks. So I, I you know, much as I have said <laughs> that it's heavily laden with government appointees, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I know that those um, you know other folks who ask, are appointed can outside I, can I quickly ask you this before I bring in our? Can yeah. I quickly ask you this? You know, the Institute for Governance Reform published um, a paper. That paper talked about how government is framing national policies as, um, as a tool for, for vengeance, for them to revenge, and how opposition politicians are using the people as a shield to escape accountability. So the question I want to ask is, for ex for if, if we are to go by that paper, so the opposition politicians do not want to be held accountable for whatever reasons, and government is saying, wait, then we don't do with this, we come back, tit for tat. Mm -hmm. Going to the August 10 unrest, the, the government is saying, and this is from every other government official that I have engaged in my profession, asking questions about this is, I mean, it was an insurrection, it was an attempted coup, executed, financed by opposition politicians, call them terrorists and all of that. So if those comments have been there already and setting up a committee to go and look at these incidents that have already been characterized in some certain way, does it mean that this committee would just be validating what government has been putting out? Yes, I think a lot of eyebrows have been raised about that and it makes the work of the committee a lot more difficult now because they have been pretty much put in the spotlight to mm -hmm. say, we have made all these comments, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if they co come back to us to say, without evidence, mm -hmm. I mean, they may well come back to us to say it was an insurrection. Right. But with the abundance of evidence, some of us would believe them, mm -hmm. right? But if they come back to us to, to validate the expressions of government without evidence, then it would be a lot more difficult mm -hmm. to accept. Let me come back to what Mr. Givao said about Addis bail. And I think that we have spent so much resources on bail. You know, I've always made this point. Oscar Pistorius, for example, who accidentally shot his girlfriend, mm -hmm. he was being um, investigated for murder. He was granted bail, right? I have said, um, and you, we can disagree on the timelines because I, I can't remember, I was not on, the, on that right. panel. When Addi came on AYV, I think it took about... That um, was July 10. July 10. Uh, he was invited a few days ago. So it's, it's been well over, my mathematics is still okay, about well over three months or so, right? We are saying that the police has every right, like he said, to investigate anyone. I could be investigated after this program. Right. Um, only God knows, right? Mm -hmm. But the point I'm making, a man of that stature who has his legal practice in Sierra Leone, who was former um, anti-corruption commissioner, should, should have been granted bail on his own recognizance. You are investigating the man's comment. There is nothing else that a man can come on AYV to recharacterize what he has said, mm. right? And when we engaged the authorities, we were very clear. You can investigate him for all you want. That's your right. But please give him bail, right? In some countries, if you have, if you have held such significant position, like the sort of position that um, 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 Awa is holding, you can be given bail, bail based on your own recognizance. Mm -hmm. The same thing that IGL said. To say, can right. give this man bail? It's not a flight risk. He will not suddenly abandon the country because um, he's been investigated for his comments. We spent almost 48 hours to get the police to grant Adi Macaulay bail. Bear in mind, that is Adi Macaulay. Imagine Brian Macagbo. Imagine some Fode Kamara, unknown person. Imagine the sort of um, 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 difficulties that they encounter in the hands of the police. And there's been a lot and lot of resources. As we speak, I think about a week or so ago, there was a training on bail 
We have had more than 30 or so trainings on bail. They have not translated into action. No reform. When once a citizen is summoned by the police, they, they have apprehension. They are fearful. Right? That should not occur. Mm. Our wife should go to the police without, if she needs a lawyer, she can call a lawyer, but she can go to the police being confident that the procedures and processes work mm -hmm. and they work for everyone regardless of whether you are in the ruling party or in the opposition they should work for everyone that's the sort of society that we yearn for mm. that's the sort of society that we want that will give protection to mr gevao who is a government and um, um, politician as much as it would give to me as an activist or to brian Akagbo or to soe um, um, Koroma. So equal, equality of um, um, processes and procedure. So we spent about 48 hours to get this, um, um, uh, the police to put him on, on bail. You know, I, I, I understand that in some circumstances, if you're a known, and that's the, that's the primary consideration, if you're a flight risk, right, they can withhold your bail to ensure that uh, you come forward with shorties mm -hmm. who would guarantee that your you presence run away. at every step of the investigation, okay. mm. right? Even in that case, once you have shorties, you should be granted bail. Right. And I think that we should not be stuck in this cycle of people panting after government um, authorities to beg for bail. I made that point in that press conference, <laughs> that bail is not a favor. It's not some gift that the police would dish out to citizens. We could talk it about that. Be, I, it should be a right. I, I, and the right to fear trial and all of that. Absolutely. We could talk about yes. that all night long. But let me quickly um, bring in our, you know, what, what has been very fundamental is that our politicians have been honest enough to own up that Sierra Leone is polarized. And that polarization can never make your work easy. Because if I even just the the way Sierra Leone is structured now politically. Southeast, you, you can give a color. Northwest, you can give a color. How, how is that I mean, coming out for the Peace Commission? That evidently we're seeing the two political giants trading accusations of um, who has done better over time as compared to the other, um, who has more international support. I, I mean, <laughs> It's, it's making society so, so hard to live, I mean, a society like Sierra Leone. So if we are to maintain the peace, we've, we've listened to, to unfortunate utterances from politicians that appear to, to fan the flames. So how do we then start with the politicians? You said they went to that um, conference on International Peace Day. And I would not want to say they made rhetorics, but in your words, they made commitment. They accepted their fault, and they, they said they are going to change that. But how, is there a clear strategy or a model that we should devise to get the politicians to be committed to peace? Because without it, we're not going to enjoy our 2023 general elections. Already there are red flags. Okay. Again, let me say that the you rightly say that the Peace Commission work is not an easy one mm, and mm, people keep saying mm. they don't envy me mm, <laughs> all mm, the time. Right. Um, definitely, nobody will envy the Peace Commission at this time, starting um, in the eve or at the eve of elections. Mm. But um, th from our strategic plan, the approach that we have decided, and this is not just us, but we had the public feeding into our strategic plan. We have to work bottom top, top bottom. So we'll be using two-track approach. Mm. And that's what we've already started. We've started a lot of dialogue. We've gone into the district. Mm -hmm. As I speak to you, we've done four already. And um, this week, they're starting another six. Um, we go into the district. Mm -hmm. We want to listen to the people. And it's not just the power man chiefs or those in authority. We want to listen to the people themselves. And that's what we've been doing for the last um, four districts. We, we sit down and people express themselves. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to be arrested in those our dialogue forums. And we take notes because those, will, those notes will help us in mm -hmm. terms of our actions and our activity 
towards um, this coming elections mm -hmm. from now on. What we should be doing at district level, what we should be doing at national level, you'll be surprised some of um, the things that people discuss mm -hmm. that you think they're not even updated with what's going on at national level, at district level. Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised the kind of people expressing themselves. These are not just government workers or even ticket drivers that we call. These mm -hmm. are the local people who we don't notice around. Mm. Teachers that we think they just understand the chalk and board issues, right. right? How development and how even the forthcoming elections mm -hmm. um, resonate to them and how they believe things should flow in the direction. These are the people we've been talking with. Even with the, the, the International Peace Day, we had the symposium mm -hmm. where it was, it was very intimating where um, black street boys, mm -hmm. um, the boys, the, 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 the um, friends of the dead, right. they were all there having dialogue with the police, mm. telling the police, that these are some of the things we don't like about you. These are things that you, the way you've been handling us, that we think is wrong. And how could you be doing this to us when this is the right channel, we think? And the police, the military, they were all there to explain themselves and accepted some of their faults mm. that they didn't understand which they were explaining to them at this point. I think these are some of the conversations we'll continue with. Because we want those at the top to be listening to the least people and them understanding themselves. If we believe that the judiciary system um, and the legal mm -hmm. part, that's the lawyers, the solicitors, mm -hmm. are having issues, we'll set up that kind of platform so that they will have that kind of dialogue. Mm -hmm. If we also believe that the, the lawyers and the police are having issues, it's not just about implementation maybe they need a proper dialogue they need to talk mm. i'm sure once the different institutions and the different category of people start having conversation things will change having the law and understanding how the next person thinks that's a completely different thing once we start understanding ourselves why do we have for example the kenyans at this level you're using a, an example mm -hmm. right they listen. Honestly, I've been following the Kenyans. From the last president, you find out that he listened. And because he listened, he was able to make changes. Mm. And when this new president came in, what did he say? He said, my predecessor did this. So I am following my big brother. Mm. He's learning from a mentor. Which That's will be a new phenomenon called. in Sierra Leone. Exactly. So what we need to do is now to listen, learn. We see new things are happening. New things will be adapting themselves. We'll be seeing changes. It will not come in a day. We need to see definitely those in authority taking drastic steps in terms of changes. And at the same time, those at the bottom, holding them accountable in an accountable manner. Again, let me use the accountable manner. There mm -hmm. are two ways to do things. Um, my brothers already mentioned them. One, we have the reckless way of doing things. And secondly, we have the responsible way of handling things. Mm. So I think we need to change our strategy to, to, to responsible manner of handling things. And I'm sure Peace Commission is here. We're here to listen and we're here to help guide some of those processes to make sure that responsible manners should be listened to. For example, with the, with the um, female strike, mm -hmm. when um, Femi wanted to lead the strike, I was there, I went to her house, and I asked her, what do you want? She said she wants to speak. They want to speak with the president. Mm -hmm. I said, is that all? Yes, he said, and she said she's not been listening to us. I said, okay, I can make sure that we facilitate that, right? I said, because bike riders want to come out on the streets. Would you be able to handle them, assuming they join your strike? Mm -hmm. And she said, no, she cannot. She didn't call them. If they are there, then she will not take ownership and responsibility of that. And against that background, I asked her, please cancel the strike and let work this other part. Mm -hmm. Because that's our responsibility. 
And she said, no, she cannot cancel. The strike must go on. And I said, well, fine. The police are here. I can't do anything in that light. Because if we were to cancel, then we would have seen what we could have done in that light. So these are kind of the kind of responsibility that is our owners and that should be the citizens' owners. And let's see how we could work it. Assuming that we have vouched that we'll ensure that you meet with those in authority and we do not fulfill our mandate, then you have the Peace Commission to blame that, oh, you asked us to cancel the strike, this was our goal and we weren't able to meet this. Mm. Again, let me also drive in on, 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 on what's happening at regional. Right. The region. Go ahead. We notice that the region is in turmoil, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The region is unsafe. Right. The region is in so much tensions. Mm -hmm. I've been speaking with my colleagues in different countries, right? Tensions are mounting. Even in, in Ghana, it's not like cool, but because of the economic yeah, economy, reasons, right. you so much is trending, yeah. right? Uh, Nigeria, with elections coming, so much is trending as well. Not to talk of the, 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 the French-speaking countries mm. and their coup d'etat right. that's been going on, right? And if the strength is not taken care of, mm -hmm. we don't want to see this in Sierra Leone. Election is just next door. It's our responsibility, not just the Peace Commission, but everybody's responsibility, every institution responsibility, mm. including the media responsibility, mm. to see how we could all work as a team to ensure that we have this stability, this peace. So we have a very peaceful elections at the mm. end of the day. Right. Again, let report matters. Let ensure that we continue this dialogue because it's only when we continue to dialogue and act upon what we hear in this dialogue forum, that we will succeed. Mm. Because if we only listen to dialogue and do not take actions, then we will have ourselves Wasted to blame, mm. right? So all of what we're listening, people should come out and say, I have this problem. And these are some of the issues that needs to be addressed. And if they are not taken into cognizance, then we know, oh, the Peace Commission is only there as another bulldog. Right. They're not helping us to fulfill our dream. But we're here to help, okay. and we're here to promote peace. We don't want to be like our neighboring countries or, or our regional friends or big brothers and sisters around. Let's maintain the peace and go through another successful elections so that Sierra Leone would continue to be that testimony as a country that have evolved from war to peace and was still transcending into a peaceful country. All right, let me run through a few messages. Um, I'm going to promise you I will take as much as time will permit me to. Um, Mustafa Kone is saying, suppose the police is not giving permits to people who want to do anti-government protest. The police in Sierra Leone is always pro-government. Amara Alpha is saying, as a patriot of this country, the August 10 riot was an unfortunate and unacceptable situation, and all those who organized and financed must face the law because nobody is above the law of the land. Incitement is also against the rule of law in Sierra Leone, and anyone who incites people to cause havoc must face the music. Um, Isa Josephine Jones is saying, I believe that because the leader of the protest is beyond your reach, the government has decided to point fing fingers on the innocent people. Protests these days um, do not need um, sponsorship or censorship, instructions via any social media platforms will be able to get as much followers as needed. Joseph Morrison is saying, um, Dr. Blumain, of all out, um, okay, that's not too clear, please. Um, Ibrahim Jokema, you don't have to be a law professor to understand that there's a very thin line between forming a legal opinion and openly instigating an outright insurrection. It is called criminal liability, of which Adi Macaulay is guilty. All right? Abu Vera is saying, I am very happy to share this great testimony, how I get out, okay? You take that to church. Um, Daniel Kamara is saying, um, if you can just avoid the personal attacks and let's just address the issues, tailor your messages to the issue we're discussing. George Orwell is saying, if the Renaissance movement then asked the IG for clearance to protest for higher petrol price, where is that organization now as basic commodities have skyrocketed astronomically? <laughs> Interesting. Um, Philip Bangura is saying, dishonesty and lack of integrity from, um, okay, I'm leaving it there. 
I, I would not continue. Lawyer Mara, if you take the government to court, what will they lose? Trust, it's difficult to fight a ruling government. Let no government decide um, to wicked. Okay, that's not too clear. IBT Kuruma. Um, at most, I'm going to take five more messages. We have um, so many of them here. Ronald Georgeton is saying the censorship in Sierra Leone is reminiscent of the Siaka Stevens era when expressing one's difference of opinion um, leads you in detention. Bokari Sao is saying no lawyer or lawyers have the right to interpret Sierra Leone constitution except the Chief Justice and his um, partner justices. Hence the reason folks always um, go to the Supreme Court for interpretation. Citizens are fed up with the ongoing political infight in the country. What we're concerned about is the high prices of commodities in our country. Daniel Kabwe is saying, in Sierra Leone, what is lacking is an eminent group of, of elders that are apolitical. Like other nations in the sub-region, they have traditional rulers who might, um, with, um, as such as the Obas and the Ashanti king, when they speak, their subjects listen. We need to form such bodies um, that should be included in the composition of the Peace Commission. Two more messages. If a lawyer that has the right to interpret the constitution of a state was arrested for his own opinion, definitely I'm afraid of the freedom of speech of journalists and the ordinary citizens of the state. Democracy is only now working on paper, um, but not for everyone. Magdalene Kelfala is saying if a lawyer of Mr. Macaulay's standing was arrested for merely expressing his own appreciation of the law, then I'm so afraid for all of us. Interesting. And um, Justice Moy Samba is um, saying, um, hello, good evening, Samuel. People are talking at the rooftop that Adi was detained. Was Charles Magai not detained at the CID for this? Okay, um, I'm going to allow um, you guys to quickly respond to some of the messages, and then we can chat the way for me to way forward for a better society. Honorable. Yes. Um I think the bulk of the messages are still um, on the Mr. Macaulay. Mm. Like I said, the police have the right to, uh, to invite any civilian and uh, for investigation. That one is false within their policy. Mm. That one I can see. And I also allege the fears of the public that merely coming on AYV will not warrant the police to arrest you. Mm -hmm. I have been here discussing very sensitive national issues. I have never been arrested. Mm -hmm. And uh, Is it because you are aligned with the system? <laughs> no, not because of that. Let me tell you somewhat. We have all had our bitter experiences in Sierra Leone with regard coming on public forum. Mm -hmm. I was nearly charged to court because I used to campaign for SLPP at 98.1 on SLPP app. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a whole cabal against me. People said, oh, go and check whether when he's registering his conveyances, he pays it correct. And, and that's, <laughs> I had to go prostrate in front of somebody to say, look, I merely went to campaign. I did that, OK? I had to go bail. I said I did not campaign, I did not go on radio to actually damage or destroy anybody personally. Like he said, when you come, before I come on AYV every day, including today, I pray <laughs> for me not to come and say something for here intervention. that will annoy the public, for me not to come and say something here, I mean, that will hurt somebody. But the, tru oh, the but truth itself hurts. Yes, but somebody has to come. If you invite me to come and discuss national issue and I say no, I will not come, then who then will come? You know, so that is our society. Right. The moment you go saying something that does not favor the other person, it's a problem. He's going to orchestrate, okay, he's going to couch you or try to brand you in a way that you are not. We've all faced that one. What he's faced, what he's faced with today, 
I was faced with that one. I mean, there were, there, there were times when you go and say, oh, I'm looking for lawyer giver to give him a case. Oh, lawyer giver, if you give him your case, look, 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 they will give judgment against you. If investors come and they say, oh, I'm going to lawyer giver to incorporate my company, or if you go to lawyer giver, your business will not, you, I mean, will not give you permission for you to operate. We've all faced that one. That's why we are praying that we move from where we where even where we are, to a better Sierra Leone. Mm. But I am asking the public, don't shy away from coming to AYB only on the fact that, I mean, somebody came here and he was invited. I want you to know the rule of law dictates that nobody is above the law. The police can call me today to say, Honorable Gebao, mm. we are not happy with what you said on AYB. Can you please throw light on it? Mm. And like I said, on the issue of bail, I mean, I cannot comment. Mm. Whether what they do or what they don't do, it is right. their job. I cannot. Comment. All right. Let me let me hear from um, Augustine. You know, as you say that, it brings it brings um, to, to to memory that um, at some point um, under this fifth parliament, we're well, under the fourth parliament as well. I mean, I was summoned. And under this fifth parliament, <laughs> have been summoned <laughs> for, for practicing what I do, what, what I do. So, <laughs> so, so how, how do we get all of these things, you know? Into, how do we create a society that people, I mean, so long mm -hmm. as you uphold the principles and you do not go outside, you do what is, I mean, as dictated by the very law, how, how do we handle all of these things? I think there's a lot of, um, to be honest, a lot of political dishonesty. Mm. I remember when um, folks within this regime, um, including um, Issa Givao mm. here, spoke about some practices within parliament. Right. It was very bold enough. Mm -hmm. um, I acted as a lawyer for Honorable Tawa Conte mm -hmm. when he blew the whistle on um, certain practices in parliament. Corruption. I thought that that would have been used as a crusade against several other institutions mm. to ensure that we are very, very decisive against corruption. Um, but unfortunately, it seems as if the crowd, uh, you know, came out and drowned those same voices. <laughs> um, somebody mentioned about, oh, in, in fact, Charles Magai was invited, detained, etc., etc. Are we addressing wrongs with wrongs of the past? You know, I, I am very close to Mr. Charles Magai, and, and I know that we did speak up against his detention. It was a wrong. It was, it was clearly wrong back then. Somebody misused this power. Somebody abused this power. Then. So are we saying that it's okay now for some other person who has now the ends of power to abuse this same power? No. What we're seeking to do is, to, is, for, is for us to have a nation where rights are guaranteed, where Mr. Gevaro, within his ruling party, can speak up against a wrong, and it should be fine, it should be safe. It should be celebrated. But, but, but because I, 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 I say I, I, what you mean, Samuel. I, I know, but just before you before lie, I, are there yeah. specific um, mechanisms we should put in place? Because uh, citing um, Honorable Gevao, for example. Yes. I mean, he made, he made that statement on this very show, AYV right. on Sunday, far before the BBC went after him. Yes. He made that on my show first. And he was that And it was, was cowed. He was so, hounded. So <laughs> this is a man that should have been celebrated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That st statement should have spurred action right. to change parliaments in, mm -hmm. in, in the manner in which they engage with the public right. to boost the confidence in the institution. Mm -hmm. But this man was hounded right. for speaking the truth. And say what you may, when people have um, the reins of power, you can expect significant change from the ruling party than from the opposition right. because they have the resources of power. So when you have folks within the regime, the ruling regime, come forward and speak about Saturday wrong, that should be a platform for leadership to ensure that they do not only investigate, but uh, you know, change and alter policies mm. and procedures, and not um, overnight demonize good people who come forward to say enough is enough. Mm. Because when you have sentiments from opposition folks, 
you can easily dismiss them. Now opposition, but when you have folks within your own regime who blow whistle on certain practices, those people should be protected, they should be celebrated, and decisive actions must be taken. Mm. And it saddens me, because I thought that, that would have been a crusade led by Mr. Gevao and Tawa Conte mm -hmm. when they blew the whistle on parliament. You know, so it's sad. And I think that there's a lot of deliberate leadership that ought to be given by the ruling party. I am not um, 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 excusing the opposition. I think that there ought to be a synergy. But the olive branch has to be extended by the ruling party. What if the opposition does not want to welcome that branch? Again, what, what, what happens in a democratic space? For, because. I mean, somebody, somebody submitted, somebody submitted why we're having all of these problems at this point is because the opposition has not accepted that, hey, come on, it's four years, I mean, we're added to five years, you've not accepted that you lost in 2018, so you think you should just go on creating problems. So how do we handle all of this? I mean, you extend olive branch by actions, more than words, mm. by actions. Um, if, if what you're saying on platforms um, differs significantly from your conduct in your engagement with opposition and critical voices, mm -hmm. that does not translate into extending olive the olive branch. It mm. has to be honest, it has to be consistent, mm. and it has to be decisive. Right. Right? We can now hold the opposition and critical and those other um, voices accountable to say, this government has... Um, has gone over and beyond mm -hmm. in ensuring that they conscript you into the governance process. Mm. But um, um, to be honest, with all the reports, with all the um, studies, they show that much little has been done, mm. right? And I think that leadership does have the responsibility to ensure that they lead the process. You mm -hmm. cannot have the opposition lead the peace process. They have to lead, they have to show leadership, they have to be consistent, and they, they have to be decisive, mm. right? We share a lot of examples of Pakaba, mm -hmm. when he had everything to have crushed maybe the other forces, um, several other um, um, people who were up against him and his government, right? He went over and beyond, including making for this and for example, you know, um, mm -hmm. um, appointing him to the status of vice president, you know, making him chairman of strategic resources committee, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. it was, right? So that was somebody going over and beyond, right? And I think that once that is done, um, many people will come out to say, oh no, I think the opposition are just being crybabies right. because they have been given so much, mm -hmm. not by just words, but by action to ensure that, um, for example, in this socio-economic crisis, which um, it's, it's global, right? Yeah. I'm not excusing inaction domestically, but let's say you set up um, a special committee to address the socio-economic crisis, and you bring opposition um, big men or experts to sit on a certain committee to ensure that they have their views, they would feel, part, they would feel um, a part of the governance structure. But once consistently in your policy, and you cited the IGR mm -hmm. report in terms of how they yeah. set up infrastructure more as a form of um, retaliation than inviting mm -hmm. um, opposition and critical voices. Yeah. And a lot of us suffer um, that. Because once you hold critical views against um, um, the regime, mm -hmm. they think that, oh, you are undermining government process. But, but the, the fact of the matter is, in a democracy, it should be participatory. Right. You should not only get um, folks who are pro-government officials, who are government supporters, you have a mixed bag of everyone. Opposition, critical voices. That is the beauty of democracy. And that is only, it's only when you do that, that you can have the best out of democratic um, 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 governance process. All right. And sadly, I think that um, um, little has been done, and unfortunately, we are four, um, four going to five years down the line. I hope that um, there's, uh, there's enough room to turn situations around, mm -hmm. and there's enough room for the ruling party to be decisive, 
to ensure that we keep the peace. I wrote a piece yesterday. Um, I was inspired because somebody shared like a 15 minute audio. Somebody was, um, you know, all these, these um, messages that are hateful, um, polarizing, etc. Mm -hmm. I was really personally scared. Mm. So I, it came to me that we should remember all those folks. When I was very young growing up, um, 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 Julius Spencer, mm. Ali Bangu, and, and Afula, they were doing all this, the 19th right. um, mm -hmm. um, 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 point Spot. one radio station. It was very inspiring. So people went over and beyond, they risked their lives for the peace that we enjoy. Mm -hmm. Women um, um, stripped themselves in order to demand peace from Fode Sanko. Mm -hmm. We should not forget all the sacrifices, all, right. all the limbs that we have lost, mm -hmm. all the destinies that have been shattered. We should not forget, especially the leadership. They should be decisive, consistent, and work towards keeping the peace. All right. Awa, let me hear from you. What, I mean, what path should we take now as a nation if we are to maintain our peace, especially at this um, critical period of elections? realize that elections is important and keeping in line with the democratic processes is key mm. at this time for our nation and we should understand as citizens it is our right and our responsibility mm -hmm. to exercise this right because I was even surprised that people refused to register. And I was, I'll give an example. I was talking to somebody and mm -hmm. the person was telling me that I don't think I'm going to vote. I said, okay, you're not going to vote, but there would be a precedent whether you vote or you don't vote. Mm. And that precedent is going to impact your life, whether you want it or not. Mm -hmm. That president is going to make a decision that will not only impact your life, but impact your home, mm -hmm. impact the work you do, impact your community. Mm -hmm. So don't you think that it is your right to ensure that you want that person in place? Mm. And don't you believe that that person, one way or the other, whether you like him or her or not, that person is going to affect you whether directly or indirectly. Said, I didn't see it that way. I said, then we need to start thinking. Mm. And that's what every Sierra Leonean needs to think about, especially when it comes in line with peace. A lot of people do not want to contribute towards peace themselves. It's like, but it's not important. It's not, it's just another thing. Mm. It's not relevant. But imagine what happened on the 10th of August. Directly or indirectly, everyone, even those up country, mm -hmm. that their districts were not affected, directly or indirectly, everyone, even that Mamina, that village, mm -hmm. was affected. So the question is, because we are affected by peace, directly or indirectly, we need to make conscious effort, whether in the place we work, the institutions we run, whether being at home, at school, mm -hmm. um, the tertiary communities, eh? even the ghetto, bike riders, market women association, whatever institution you, you occupy, even self-employed. Eh? Most of the business people, most of the time, honestly, most of the time, mm -hmm. I've worked in business environment, most of the time they don't care about governance. They don't care about what's going on around them. But they were greatly affected by Augustine. Mm -hmm. And not to talk about the war. Some of their business were burnt down. So how could you say, whether you are running a bank, whether you are running a shop at PZ, or the eastern part of Freetown, or the western part of Freetown, how could you say peace doesn't concern you? When it could affect your income, 
and your expenditure for the day. Mm -hmm. When it could affect your turnover for the month. How could you say it, does it, it's not important? Mm. So we need to be, be, be aware and wake up to this reality that directly or indirectly, you need to contribute towards peace building in this country. Mm. You need to get your community to understand the importance of peace. You need to get your children at home to understand the importance of peace. We need to get the people at our office, the different places we work, to understand how they need to contribute towards the peace of Sierra Leone. Mm. And honestly, when you look at the Global Peace Index, every little thing of these things affects the way they grade us in terms of peace mm. in every country. So don't say it's not important. Mm. So even the social economy, aspect that we, 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 we're talking about. Yes, it's global. But assuming we don't have rice for the rest one week, imagine, eh, a staple food. Mm -hmm. We don't have it. What it could become. Imagine what happened back of, um, between the back of Kono and, 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 and Falaba district, where because of climate change, people with their, 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 their cows were eating crops. Mm -hmm. And it led to serious fighting where somebody was killed. Right. And you say it would not affect you? It would. So being part of this process is so important. Being part of ensuring that this democratic process, not just only voting, but ensuring that you, you make sure you share your views, even to your parliament chief, eh? your tribal head, the community, Eh? Even the ghetto aid man in your, dis in your, in your, in your area, mm -hmm. it's so important. Even where the bike riders assemble themselves, how do you, you the businessman, how do you help to promote peace in that area? You say not to your business. Everybody needs to see that this is everybody's business. Our business, our world business. It's For everybody's for our business. Honestly, mm. we need to, when we go there, let, let, let's start talking in our lingua. Whether I'm in the talk and I'm in the, whether I'm a timini, talk and a timini, whether I'm a creo, talk and a creo, whether I'm a fuller, talk and a fuller. Let's understand the dynamics that mm. even our daily farming affects peace building. Right. Um, so this is important. Okay. And uh, just like somebody mentioned, that how do we get people that are not involved in politics into this space? Trust me, we have people in the district. There are people that we worked with in the past when I was in the civil society mm -hmm. space. There are people who are, who've been working as mediators. All we need to do and we will be doing is giving them enough capacity, training them so that they understand how to mediate, how mm. to come on board, how to report threats. Mm. When we, because we're setting up our, our situation room, our peace situation room for, for early warning and response, mm -hmm. rapid response system. So where people could be calling and we'll be linking them with the structures that will be setting up at district at because we'll level. be setting up structures at district level for immediate response. Okay. But nevertheless, everybody needs to be involved for peace promotion in this country so that we will have a voice. Because people could say something, mm -hmm. but if we do not respond, then we will not be able to resolve issues. All right. Quickly, Honorable, what will be your parting shot? Um, as Leonians, we must learn that elections are not, as we say, a die or do affair. Mm. If we follow um, global trends, let's take Kenya for instance. Mm -hmm. Raila Odinga has lost, let's say, three occasions. He lost this election again. Mm -hmm. He did not go to war. Kenya is at peace. I mean, when you see what's happening in America and what's happening in Sierra Leone, I mean, they are similar. Mm. In America, Donald Trump refused that, to accept that Biden won. Mm. In Sierra Leone, because of our acceptance of the governor of the, of the presidency of retired Brigadier Julius Madabio, so much 
chaos and tension has happened in Sierra Leone. Mm. For me, I will say it is a basic issue of people not accepting that he is president, he is governor. Okay. Because trust you me, most of the issues that have happened in Sierra Leone, if you take Tumbo, if you take the McKinney incident, it's all as a result of very little things that could be solved without leading to loss of life. Right. If only we accept that there is a governance system. Governance is like what happened at home. If you know that there is a head of the whole house that is your father, if something happens, I mean, you follow that channel until it gets to him. So all I'll say, we are about to go again into elections. Let us know that your life is much more important than anything that comes from um, the source of governance. All right. Because if you get yourself involved in mm -hmm. violence, in something that is not peaceful, and you lose your life, you would have been gone. And that government or governance system will continue. All right. So all our acts of reunions is let us be peace, law-abiding, let us follow the laws. If we want to do something and we are deprived or, or denied of it, let us try as best as possible to go to court. Okay. If we cannot get what we have in court, like my brother here is saying, let it be there. Papers don't get rot. One day it will come up for All right. Lawyer Mara, quickly, will be your parting shot. I, I think, Samuel, you, you spoke about red flags, mm. um, especially with the penny elections, mm. national elections. And I think that we must not dismiss those early warnings. Um, they're very significant for right. our peace. Because before a nation gets into or descends into chaos, mm -hmm. there are usually signs. Um, and it's important that we, um, we free up the, the democratic space mm -hmm. to ensure that we have as many players as possible, um, to ensure that the, both the ruling party and the opposition groups are able to engage in the electioneering process. Mm -hmm. um, because it's very si significant. Right. Uh, we don't want um, folks to go to the polls with some form of disaffection or they feel that the playing field is not level. Um, and people could easily, um, could easily, once a certain action uh, or policy or um, something is done, mm -hmm. they could easily misconstrue those policies and actions right. as being um, tailored towards favoring uh, the ruling party. So it's significant that as we go into the elections, we are able to demonstrate, mm. uh, leadership I mean, is able to demonstrate in practice mm -hmm. and in principle that um, um, democratic principles are respected. Okay. But equally, um, the courts are able to, um, you know, um, address the grievances and concerns of citizens um, before elections because mm -hmm. you could f you could um, you could be dissatisfied and you file papers in court but if you're not giving your day in court that would also inevitably mm -hmm. cause mm -hmm. disaffection right um, the neck has a duty to ensure that um, you know the campaign periods are distributed fairly so that everybody at the end of the day where you lost, you know, we feel say, oh, not this make a mm -hmm. loss, mm -hmm. oh, not that make. Right. So once you give the level playing field and people do not vote for you, they do not vote for you. All right. You know, I, 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 um, I want to slightly disagree with um, quickly, Mr. Quickly, please. Give out concerning what the acceptance of um, um, President Bio. You know, I have said that um, whoever thinks that President Bio was not legitimately um, voted into office is, is living in, in some foreign or cuckoo mm. land, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so I think it's beyond uh, acceptance. Or, uh, beyond acceptance, and I don't think acceptance is really the, the issue. The right. real issue is inclusive governance, no. and we have not spoken a lot about I inclusive know. Go well, that, governance. That is a topic for another day. Yes, we have um, to. <laughs> we, we, the winner takes all, all and, exactly. that's, and that's go that sort of governance where in one regime would come and they think that it's our own turn to rule, it's our own and turn to And resources are distributed just, to just towards Jumbo. them. Quickly, yes. Awa, a minute, quickly. Let yeah. me um, 
emphasize that indeed for my brothers here, there is no peace without justice. Mm -hmm. Again, there is no peace um, without development. Mm -hmm. You need development for peace. And I want to emphasize on these two areas because if with the justice, um, I believe that everybody and every institution need mm -hmm. to work together for us to, the, the citizens, mm -hmm. to feel that they're citizens and to feel that they're in their own country mm. and they are enjoying their rights. And in so much that the citizens also have to take um, their responsibilities into cognizance. Okay. In terms of development, it's everybody's business to ensure that we promote peace so that the investors would come in, so that we'll be able to do our daily businesses and everything will go on as normal. And I want to leave this with us, that elections is just a period. We need to, and, and every year there is this global peace index assessment that assess us, mm. not just during elections or after elections, but every year. Mm. So it simply means that peace is an everyday thing. Mm. So we need to keep the peace so that Sierra Leone continue to improve and grow from strength to strength, not just during elections, but every day of our lives. Thank well, you. thank you very much, um, gentlemen and lady. It's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed the privilege of your time this Sunday evening. Thank you very much. And this is where we end um, tonight's program. Many thanks to our panelists. We do apologize for the conspicuous absence of Emmanuel Safa Abdullah, lawyer. And, um, but if, in case you miss a part of this, remember, a repeat of it comes up on Thursday, 10 p.m. on AYV. And um, a fresh edition comes up same time, same station next week. Remember, we are your home of all things credible, factual, and all times balanced news. The show has been AYV on Sunday. My name is Samuel Weiss Bangura, and up next is our AYV Primetime News. Till then, take care of yourself and have a lovely night. <laughs>